Hi and welcome back to the second video on the exam class. So in this video we are going to learn how to create multiple choice exercises in our exam. So as I said, this is the second video in the series. So if you have not seen the first video, then you can click up in the right corner where I have a link to the first video in the series. So to create a multiple choice question, we first of all need to create a question. So let's say that the question is which of the following statements are true. So if we now compile, then we have the question which of the following statements are true. And let's say that this multiple choice question is worth half a point. Okay, so now we need some options and we are going to learn several ways of doing this. The first way is to use the environment choices. So this choice environment works a lot like parts and question environment. So inside here, we can write a choice. And the first choice is going to be every continuous function is differentiable, like this. So this is obviously false, and let me also correct the spelling mistake. But if I now compile the document, we see that we have an option A here, which is every continuous function is differentiable. So since this one is false, let's add another one. And the second one is going to be a function, which is both right and left continuous is continuous. And let me also just correct the spelling mistakes. And if I compile this one, we see that we have two options, option A and option B, where option B is the correct one. And let's do a third option, and this is exactly the same. And let us also add another true option. So every uniformly continuous function is continuous. So this is also true. So in this case, if you have multiple true options, you should probably say to the student that this is a possibility. Otherwise, even though they know the material, some of them will trip up. So let's compile it and move on to the second way of doing multiple choice. Okay, so the second way is that sometimes the choices are so short that they don't need an entire line by themselves. So for instance, if our second question is just what is the value of the integral? And then an integral, for instance, So in this case, this choices is going to be very short because it's just numbers. So then we want all the choices in one line. And in this case, we can use the one power choices environment. So one power choices stands for one paragraph choices. So here, all of the choices is going to be in one paragraph and stand in one line. So let's start by begin one power choices. So here we have a begin and end environment. And as in choices, we need to write choice inside this environment as well. So let's say that the first choice is going to be zero, which is false, but let's say so. And let's recompile the environment to just see how it looks. 
So here you see that the choice come on the same line as the question. If you do not want this, you need to have an additional line here. So if we compile again, we see that the choice A here jumped down to a separate line. Okay, as I said, zero is the false choice. So we need some more choices where one of them should be correct. So Vincent Pi and the correct answer two. Then we can have a choice being 2 pi. And finally, let's say that we have a choice being 1. So let's compile it and see all the different choices. And as you see here, now we have all of these choices on one line instead of separate lines as here. So the final way of making multiple choice exercises, which I'm going to go through in this video, is to have checkboxes. So again, we need a new question. And let's say that this is also worth half a point. And in this case, the question is going to be which of the following is true? for the function f of x equal x squared minus 2 on the interval. And then we take the half open interval from 0 to 2. Okay, so let's compile to see the question. And now our goal is to create checkboxes so the student can just cross off which of the answers are the correct one. So to create the checkboxes, we simply use the checkboxes environment. Let me press enter here. And the checkboxes environment works exactly the same as the one power choices environment and the choices environment. So we write choice here, and then we can write one option, for instance, the function f is strictly increasing and positive. And if we now compile, we can see how it looks. So here we have a circle being the checkbox. So for the function f, this is wrong because the function here is not positive. So let's have some more choices. For instance, the function f is decreasing and negative, which is also false. So let's have some more. And finally, the correct one, which is going to be the function f is none of the above. So let's compile and see how it looks. So here we have one, two, five different checkboxes. And now the student can make a check mark uh, on the one being the correct one. So this one, and then it can deliver in the exam sheet with the check mark here. So an additional thing I want to go through in this video is that we have some commands summing up all the questions. So how many questions we have and additionally, how many points the questions are in total. So let's say that we want to use these commands to create a little information box on the top of the exam sheet. So here after the title, we can have a section with just some information. 
So let's compile and then we are going to fill out some information. So the first command is the number of questions, which is abbreviated to num questions. So if we want to state how many questions the exam has, we can simply write this exam contains and then use the new command num questions. And then I will have a backslash here to just create the space and then questions. So let's recompile. And now you see that on the top here, we have that the exam contains six questions. And if you count them up, we see that we have six here. The final thing is that I also want to say how many points it's possible to get on the exam. To do this, I will use the numPoints command. But before I use it, I need an optional argument here, which is add points. So the optional argument here makes it possible to add the points in the exam. One thing that is very important is that you can only add whole numbers of points and half number of points. So for instance, one and a half. But if you try to write in 1.3 as being the number of points here, you cannot sum up the number of points. So let me continue on this information part here. And let me also just add that the maximal number of points is, and then use the num points command here. And if I now compile, you can see that this exam contains six questions. And if you sum up all the points, then you also have that the maximal number of points is six. And just to verify if I change the number by having two and a half on this first exercise here, because it's a big exercise compared to the others, I have that the maximal number of points becomes seven instead of six as previously. This was everything I wanted to go through in this video. So in the next video, we are going to learn how to create a solution to the exam. So see you again in the next video.